Good morning. The committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 11.30. Our next case is Mr. Eugene Minor. Mr. Minor, would you please give us your full name and DOC number? Eugene Renee Minor, DOC 6051-78. Thank you, Mr. Minor. Mr. Minor, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. And then the board is going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participants who've indicated willingness to speak have their input. At the end of that uh, process, you can make a brief statement before the board. Those persons uh, who are here today with us that wish to speak are uh, on Zoom. Uh, your great aunt in support is Carol Emery, your brother Julius Sanchez, and your godmother Dale Pierre. Uh, speaking in opposition are Miss. Uh, Genesis Sterling, Joan Minor, and Andre, uh, no, I'm sorry, just present. Uh, no one's speaking, but they are present here in the uh, our facility here at headquarters. Uh, do you understand our process, sir? Yes, sir. Uh... This is uh, Eugene Minor, DOC number 605-178, a date of birth. February the 27th of 1988. He's a second class offender. He has a parole eligibility date of October the 4th of 2022. Uh, he is not eligible for good time. He has a full term date of October the 4th of 2027. He is currently serving a 10 year sentence on the charge of indecent behavior with a juvenile. Uh, Mr. Uh, Minor, is that information all appear to be accurate? Yes, sir. Mr. Minor, uh, your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. She will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions she might have? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Uh, is this your first parole hearing? Yes, ma'am, it is. Oh, okay, good, good. Well, come up for the record how long you've been in jail on this chart. It'll be uh, five years, uh, approximately six years, and uh, the coming October 4th of this year. And October will be six years old, all right, uh, five years. And how old are you today? 35. 35. How much education do you have? Uh, I, did I did complete my um, high set uh, diploma in 2020, December of 2020. But the last actual grade that I completed was the um I was the seventh grade. I was in the eighth grade, but I hadn't completed uh the eighth grade. I had I being incarcerated, I've gotten my um high set diploma. Very good. I, I had that at the top of my sheet. Yeah, December the eighth of 2020. You got your high set. Congratulations. They don't give those away. So I know you worked hard. Okay. Now, do you have a trade? Are you working toward a trade? Uh, I have um, enrolled in Ashland University. Okay. Um, uh, the application is still open only due to the fact that uh, there has been some type of hold on um, the Pell second chance Pell Grant, uh, but uh, I do have a trade that I have accumulated and still framing while I was outside in society in um, 2007 or 2008 and still framing. And I've worked the multiple of jobs um, dealing with steel as a whole. But um, as far as furthering my education, I'm, I'm still awaiting either Ashland or to get in some other type of uh, recreational uh, and job experience uh, program. Okay. Have you decided what you would major in if you got accepted into Ashland? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I will be going for um, my associates in business uh, management. Okay. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, a couple of the curriculums would include uh, world religion, uh, financial, as well as um, uh, you know either uh, sociology, psychology, or um, good, good. Actually, actually. Yes. Yes. That, that, that sounds really good. That. Uh, you do have a, a pending charges from 2018 in Orleans Parish that they do have a detainer on you. Are you aware of that? Um, when my um lawyer, whom I had in representing, no, no, they don't have a detainer, but there's an outstanding warrant, and that's what they, they don't have a detainer. So, what you show a warrant, there's no detainer on, right? Right, ma'am. 
Okay, yeah, right. they don't detain them, but they do have a warrant for you from 2018. Are you aware of those open charges? I'm not. Yeah, uh, they, they uh, it's, it's quite a few charges. It seems like it was a uh, domestic violence incident where you got six charges on April the 22nd of 2017. Oh, uh, if you, you, you went wild that day. I've been incarcerated since October 4, 2017, man. Well, I don't know that date of 4, 27, 22 or 27 is when the charge was, a, was alleged, was lodged, or when it was committed. I don't know. But on the rap sheet, it, it's showing that's the date that you was charged with. I don't know when the incident occurred. Okay. But they, they do have an open bond. bond uh, if you got any family, you can ask them to go look at it and we'll find out what's going on with it. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, you in your in your criminal history, you had a court to the juvenile charge back in two thousand six. What was that about? Uh, I had uh, encountered a young lady whom I had met in New Orleans, Louisiana, when I was located at a residence in um, um, New Orleans East. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, was misled on what well, my entire family was misled on the actual age of this individual in which we later found out that she had been a runaway from i believe covens in georgia um and and which uh when it was you know uh brought to our attention i i was turned into the precinct to you know uh deal with that accordingly. So with the cruelty of your juvenile, what was the cruelty? And you, I think look, what I'm looking at, you got 24 days in the parish jail. I thought you said, and pertaining to the misdemeanor carnal knowledge of a juvenile. The, okay, now you had a carnal knowledge of a juvenile. That was in 2017. So uh, I'm talking about the 2006 incident. I was going to ask you about the 2017 next. The misdemeanor carnal knowledge of a juvenile. You don't recall though? I've, I've only, I've the only in 2006, man. <laughs> Unless I miswrote it, yeah, that's what I'm showing. Yeah. But that's, that a, that's has, a, I'm sorry, that 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 could have, cruelty to June, that could have, that could have been an incident. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not for certain, but because I okay. can't even, I so remember in 2008. That's, that's what the, uh, the information I have shows that was the outcome of, of the, who are the two a juvenile charge? You got 24 days in the parish jail. No, okay, no, I, that's okay. I'm just curious because uh, you know it, it says I like to, uh, I like to kind of look at history and uh, and how did you get here? You know how did you get to indecent behavior with a juvenile? Oh, okay. Excuse me, I apologize. I do recall that incident in which I got into a fight with a um with a uh the guy out uh, of 2006 I, I which was a year after Katrina I had to be just making 17 years old and uh -huh. in a that's a, a trailer park um Myrtle Grove trailer park mm -hmm. in which in which I had gotten into a fight with a guy who was approximately the age of 15 or 16 years old it was um uh it was a it was a verbal domestic uh the verbal a verbal altercation that ended up getting physical in which the police had gotten called in that, in that, um, yeah, yes, you get 24 days in the past year. And so the yes. 2017 must be when the girl was a runaway and then you didn't know she was a minor. That I was guess, in 2017. Oh, so, so that wasn't 2017, ma'am. That was 2000 and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Thirteen. It was it was it, it was charged as felony carnal knowledge of a juvenile, but then was amended to misdemeanor carnal knowledge of a juvenile. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what the record shows. But I was trying to figure out uh, what happened in that incident. I, that's what I'm asking you about. I have that in the record. Talking about the one that I'm incarcerated for today, ma'am. Or that's okay. the one. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my line of, line of question. What was your relationship? To the victim that you were incarcerated for now. That's my uh, that's my niece. That is my biological brother's um, daughter. Okay, right. Uh, speak to that now. Now that you've you've been down for five years, what have you come to the conclusion about this? 
I come you to had a chance to say anything to her? What would you say? I, that my actions were not justifiable. That my words wouldn't be able to express the remorse that I have to extend to that person. That that person did nothing wrong uh, deserving of my foolish actions that that I that I depicted that it wasn't helpful that you know that I mean I've just I've just come you know I've come I've I've done a lot to try to to to, to atone uh to try to just for future references to not end up having to inflict this much pain on any other individual because no one is deserving of that. Um my my you know, um, I, 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 with, with the deepest sincerity, I mean, I, I, I could, I can't take back what I did, you know, and I would just hope that it not have caused as detrimental of a problem as a, a psychological, psychological wise, because it's, it, it, there is a ripple effect, and you know, there is, um, it, it, my, my actions didn't just hurt the victim, the victim's family, the victims. Um, the, the, the community, the, the the media, just the integrity, the integrity wise, um, you know, the, there's a there's a psychological strain and, and an emotional uh, pain that was caused that that's been scarred, and, and I myself, you know, I, I, knowing knowing that the, uh, the effect that that could have on a person. Uh, you know, because it's not about me, and that's that's, that's where I'm at with this. Just yeah, with okay, that was uh, that was my way of asking. I saw you took the victim impact class. You finished that on June the 26th of 23. You just finished that, so I guess yes. your answer there was what you learned in that victim impact class. Also, I had learned uh, multiple of things dealing with victims. I took the entire full-face SOTP program, which stands for the acronym for Sex Offender Therapy Program. Mm -hmm. And I received all four of those phases um, prior to also getting into the Victims Impact course in 2022. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that, you know, um, it's just for every, for every choice, every single choice that we make in life, has a reaction it has an effect and it doesn't just stop with the initial person or or or, or whatever that the crime that is being committed it doesn't just impact one individual there's a system there's a web that is created uh at you know that 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 extends and it causes it it, it, it impacts more lives I'm than we stop you there. I, I get I, I get the picture. I'm going to stop you there. Um, <clears throat> so I want to talk about your your uh, your write ups. You had three write ups in 2022. You had one in 2021 and one in 2020. Uh, that's concerning for me. Uh, and one of your write ups. Uh, Six eight of twenty twenty two was because you were talking loud. Just talking loud, and when the officer actually stopped talking, explain that to me. Uh, there's again, I'm, I'm I won't sit here and I won't make excuses for my actions. I take full responsibility for them. Um, but it, being that you asked to, for me to explain it to you, uh, they had just had some. Um, new rollings on a uh, transitional unit on N1, which is a step away from actually getting back onto the compound mm -hmm. and um, compound of the unit, general population, have you. Um, and there was loud noises being made and the officer um, had said the next person to make any noise would be uh, written up. He didn't care who it was. And actually the noise that I was making was me just trying to get his attention for him to come to my cell, which I was calling for the guard. But, you know, with all of the extra confusion going on, he kind of just was like, I, you just kind of being disrespectful. But my intent was to actually get this officer to come and see what I want. And I actually said, it's Eugene, my in the cell, such and such, that's trying to speak to you. But I mean, I can, I can understand the frustration and the confusion and why he ended up writing me up for that. But he had just said what he said. He he did in pertaining to the and and accept and um yes ma'am he did. Okay okay 
Um, if you're successful today, where would you live and how would you support yourself? I have um <clears throat> I have um plans to get out and um I, there's a residence provided for me um uh from my great aunt who has a uh, property. She has a uh, you know, she's really been my support system um, for for as long as I can remember, for all my life, really. And um, my dad has a uh, landscaping company in which he, I believe, had just been found to have dementia in which I wouldn't have a problem in going out and um, taking over those customers. Being I used to go to work with him all the time growing up with him. And uh, also, I will, will be in the market to look for uh, another part-time job as well. And I did have plans on going and enrolling in uh, a community college in the area to try to still further my education uh, uh, even more so. I, I, I just want to state this for the record. I saw that you participated in the spelling bee in 2019. I, I hadn't yes. seen that. Uh, and that was new to me. That's great. That's great. I don't know how you out, how you came out, but you did participate. Uh, I that was Go ahead. It was only it was uh, it was down to me and one other guy, and uh, my word was initiative. And being that I was just so pressured behind um, spelling it so quickly, I spelled it uh, with an A instead of an I, instead oh, okay. of N I, instead of N I, N I I N I T I T B E. I spelled it I N I T A V I. It's, it's great. I, I, I spelled it mis, misspelled it by one letter. Oh yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what? So what do you do every day now in the prison? What's your job? Uh, well, I'm a dorm modeling. I'm a signed dorm modeling. Okay. I um I'm also in reentry. The reentry program. Uh, our last week is this Tuesday coming. Um, so I, I'll be completed with that reentry program as well. Um, I've applied for the honor card in hopes to get, um, which I believe they should be holding the honor board really soon, but to try to, if hypothetically speaking, that I don't make parole, that I would be able to try to get a more um, hands on job. Have, uh, maybe prison industries or uh enemy okay. as well as still try to of course further my education or um work experience and okay. maybe a co program or something. <clears throat> yeah. All right, then that's that's all my questions. Uh, Warren, what can you tell us about this young man? I don't have any comments, wise. All right, thank you, sir. That concludes my interview. Thank you very much. Now we'll hear from uh, your supporters, Ms. Carol uh, Emery. Ms. Emery, if you would please give us your full name and uh, tell us what you'd like us to say about your uh, nephew. Uh, my name is Carol Lewis Emery. Um, Eugene has been in my life, like he said, from birth. Um, Eugene has lots of issues growing up. We've spent a lot of time getting him the help and services he needs. He's diagnosed with uh, Asperger and uh, uh, schizophrenia. And I know on and off there, he's been on and off his medicine. Sometimes he's holding his plant, but he's very intelligent. He was raised in a family that loves him. We supported him in everything he's done. It's, it's always been a Christian atmosphere. He know the word. He knows right from wrong. He can be impulsive. Even in school, he get into things. He's been in therapy forever, but he has a heart. It's unfortunate that what happened happened. I know he's remorseful. So we, there was a lot of things going back and forth with him and his biological mother, who was my niece for years. And uh, I tried my best to protect him, to stay away from them because she, Honestly, never wanted to have anything to do with him. But as a kid, people want to know who their moms are. So the back and forward happened. This situation happened. I wish he had listened to me and stayed away, but he didn't. That's unfortunate. When he comes here, he has all the support he could ever need from 
this family. I, I, I actually, have, my husband and I have, um, my husband had five kids from the first marriage. I had three. So that was eight. And then we raised your genes. So there's nine. We have a huge extended family. And so there's no issue. We don't make excuses for him. Everybody's held accountable. I'm absolutely in the process of locating a place for him. It's going to be a mobile home or we're going to rent or we're going to do something. But he absolutely will have somewhere to stay. He absolutely will have people that's going to monitor him and make sure he do what he's supposed to do. And so we're, I have his uh, daughter who's now seven. He's given me full custody from there. And I have full custody from the courts on her mom's side. We already, we've already put things in place to make sure everybody's safe, including him. You know, we don't ever want this to ever happen again. And so I, I know coming home would benefit him. We miss him and I know he miss us. And uh, that's all I can think to say. I want you to know that he does have a real support system and he really does have a support system uh, between the church, the family and the community. People are looking for him to come home and do something positive with his life. Thank I you very much. continue to do something positive with his life. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your comments. Yes. Now yes. we're here from Mr. Julius Sanchez. Good morning. I'm Julius Sanchez. I'm, uh, I'm Eugene's brother and uh, probably his biggest supporter. Uh, I was the, always the one that tried to keep him in line and I would advocate for him and my mom was telling me he made bad decisions. I just thought it was in his mind. But one day I really realized the, the, um, the Asperger's thing, it, it's, it's, it's a failure to make good decisions. So from that point on, I would try to help him to make good decisions and stay on them, right? Unfortunately, when this incident happened, I had been uh, moved to Oklahoma for some studying and I wasn't around when this incident happened. And, it's very unfortunate that it happened. Uh, I don't know all the details, but I know maybe I shouldn't say this, but honestly, I don't, uh, it's hard for me to believe that for me. And I don't know, he, he's confessing, he said this part, but it's hard for me to believe that he would even do that, you know? And uh, I know some of the other incidents that he spoke to y'all, but in the past, it, it was just him making bad decisions and not thinking things out, which I think was a direct, result of his Asperger's, you know, um, diagnosis, but he's here and, and look, if my mom is going to have a place, but I have a house with two bedrooms. Um, so I'm going to make sure he has somewhere to stay and all the support that he needs, um, especially emotionally and spiritually. And, 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 and he, I know you won't have the opportunity to talk to Eugene in depth, but he's a very spiritual person. You know, he, he's a very intelligent person, right? So I think he just made some bad decisions in life, which we all did. Believe me, I made some in my life, you know, and I know there's atonement and uh, there's redemption and, and what he knows in, in Jesus Christ. So we, we're ready. We're ready for him to come home and we, we're here to support him. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sanchez. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Dale Pierre. Yes, I'm Dale Pierre. I'm his godmother. And I've been in Eugene's life since he was 10 months old and came out the hospital. I've gone with his aunt to pick him up several times, many, many times. I know him. He's been in and out my house, him and my son, who is the same age as he is, 35. They are like brothers. And my son um, works a job where he can get him hard with him as a security officer. So he would have a job that wouldn't be an issue. And like Julius and Carol both said, Eugene would have somewhere to stay. And if all else fails, he can, well, I have a four bedroom house. He's welcome to stay in. Um, Eugene is a good kid. I've known him, like I said, all of his life. I know him. I'm a mental health social worker. I also work with clients who have schizophrenia. And Eugene, when he's off his meds is when he's his worst enemy. And so I'm believing that when he's consistent, I know he does the right thing. He make wise choices, but he's impulsive, like Carol says, and he does make unwise choices at that time. 
but as long as he takes his meds, Eugene is good. He, he follows through the things he says. He's a sweetheart. And I know it's, I love him. So I guess it's easy for me to say those things, but it's facts. And we're all Christians. Eugene know the word. He's been raised in church all of his life. And so we're looking forward to him coming back home and being a productive citizen in the community. Thank you very much, Lynn. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Minor, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before uh, the board votes? I just want to say that uh, again, how deeply remorseful I am for my actions. And that I can assure that, especially being on this side of the wall and having seen what I've seen and been forced to be away from people who actually love and want to see and me do good for myself as well as for for mankind. I, mean, I just can assure that I, 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 I'm not trying to live this. This is not for me. And I'm, I'll do by all means anything necessary and go above and beyond to the best of my ability to do better, to where this doesn't have to happen to anybody else, as well as me having to ever having to end up in a institution like this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miter. Panel ready to vote? Yes. yes. Uh, Eugenia, I uh, as, as your family has said, you are you know you're a highly intelligent young man. Uh, you have to work a little harder, you know, and 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 with your connection with your brains and your action, you have to work a little harder with that Asperger's than than everyone else has to. So I want you to hear from me. Now, I'm just one vote, just not today. For me, my vote is not uh, I would like to see a longer period right up free. Demonstrate that you can control yourself. Uh, and, and the age of the victim and the impact of the crime on the victim is, is uh, disturbing for me. Also, you have a high needs. And your needs, you have a high mm -hmm. anti thinking and, and in mental health. So th those are areas that you got the support that you need. You're just not embracing the support. You have a beautiful family. I really appreciate them here today uh, supporting you. But you stop getting right up. You start doing what they say on the other side. For me, my vote is, uh, again, not today. I want you to hear, not today. That is my vote, Jerry. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Ms. Jackson? Mr. Minor, um, I'm glad you're making some progress. I am. I'll tell you, this is from, and I've, I've seen some really difficult cases. But today, my heart is broken because the victim of this case is in this hearing room, and I can see her devastation. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she's been totally left out of this whole process. Nobody cares how well you did in this building, B. That trivializes just the horrid, horrific nature of what you've done to her and, and how you've destroyed her life. And to characterize your actions as mistakes or an unwise choice, this diminishes the harm that you have caused to her because those mistakes and, and unwise choices have devastated this child. And everybody seems to think about that. She's left out of the picture altogether. And so I don't think that's, that's right. I think she needs to understand that what happened to her was terrible. And that I and other people on the board recognize how devastating this has been to her and how devastating it would be to her to have your crime minimized by releasing you after you've served less than half of your sentence. I just can't do that today. I cannot. You have high uh, risk. You have a fair institutional um, record. And you had write-ups as recently as last year. So I don't think you're ready. And I think to release you would just minimize the impact that your crime has had on this world and will continue to have on her 
And I just hope that all the help that people are offering you, they would think about her because she's a member of their family too. That they would think about her and the help that she needs. So my vote today is to deny. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Mr. Minor, you received two votes to deny. My vote likewise would be to deny for the same reasons as outlined by my, my two colleagues. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you.